What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we're going to continue to modify our Traxxas TRX-4M. The aftermarket is really heating up for this thing, and the upgrades are pouring in left and right. We got manufacturers like Little Guy Racing Parts and Endura and Triel, everyone is just pumping out the upgrades for these things. So the Bronco and the TRX-4M in general is changing rapidly. So we're going to revisit my Bronco build here today and we're gonna throw on some bolt-on mods. We got hex extensions for width, we got steering knuckles for weight, we got diff covers for weight, we got tire inserts for better traction and improved stability. So we got a whole bunch of stuff that we're gonna go over today. So it's gonna be fun. I'm expecting big performance gains out of this thing, and I'm excited to see what untapped potential we can find inside the TRX-4M. So with that, let's jump in and take a look at these upgrades. So let's take a look at our upgrades and see what we got. Okay. First off, in no particular order, we've got Triel hex extensions slash wheel weight combos. Now, these are, let's see, 17 grams a piece, and they are 10 millimeters. Now, I don't know if that's a plus 10 millimeters, or what exactly that translates to in width. That isn't quite clear to me, because 10 millimeters is a big extension, and I'm not sure if that's a full 10 millimeters, doesn't look like it to me. In any case, these are 10 millimeter, 17 grams a piece, solid brass hex extensions. We've got Triel diff covers. Now these are around 15 grams a piece, I believe. This is for the front and the back. Unsure if I'm going to do both or if I'll just do one in the front. I might throw both on there and see how the thing behaves. And then if we want to take some weight off the back to bias it to the front, I have that option to do so. But these, again, are that nice black coated brass with the finished edges, or the unfinished edges, rather. Just look great. I love Triel stuff. They do such a good job. These are nice and heavy. Looking forward to these. Next up, we got Little Guy Racing Parts Steering Knuckles. Solid brass. Now, I had the Triel steering knuckles on order and actually got them in but then little guy racing parts came out with these and they are significantly heavier so with the, where the trio knuckles are around 10 grams a piece the little guy racing parts are 14 grams a piece so look at the it's got like a slotted rotor look to it it's that same black coated brass with the unfinished edges and the unfinished accents looks awesome these are great i can't wait to put these on here this is going to be a big one so this is going to give us a bunch of weight up front you know we'll have about 30 grams of extra weight right over the front wheels which is going to be excellent so that's why i'm thinking i might not have to do just one brass diff cover in the front i can do both but again we'll put them on there and see how the whole thing performs with everything on there Next up, we've got a billet servo tray, also from Little Guy Racing Parts. So it's gonna drop right in there for our servo. This is a nice, again, black aluminum with the unfinished edges. Very sharp looking. While we're working on it, I also got this complete bearing kit from Little Guy Racing Parts that I'm going to swap out the bushings for bearings, whatever ones I come across as I'm doing these mods. So I'll work my way through the whole thing eventually, but we got this kit so that we can convert everything over, which again, I'm also very excited about. And then finally, the last thing I got is just these Traxxas metal differential gears. So I think when I get the diff covers off, I might as well just swap these out while I'm in there. I've been holding on to these and been procrastinating on putting them on, and I think it's time to do so. So I think we'll put these in here as well. But why don't we do a baseline course run, see how the thing does now, and then we'll get to installing these. Okay, test number one, we're going to do some vertical climbing. We'll do the shoot here for our baseline. Here we go. Now we're going to do some side hilling. We're going to come across the base of the chute here.
I don't Now moving into more of the technical climbs, this is the escalator. And last but not least, Hell's Gate here. Wow. Let's talk about these upgrades real quick. So I love the stance. This thing has such a great stance on it. The added width from the hex extensions makes this thing look super gnarly. I love the slammed profile. It's low, it's wide, it's aggressive looking. It is tremendously heavy. All these brass upgrades have made this thing extremely heavy. Now the weight on this is nuts. So I'm not gonna tell you exactly what the weight is because I wanna challenge you guys a little later but I can just tell you that it's extremely heavy right now. Concerns me a little bit because I'm wondering if the motor is gonna have enough power to move this thing the way that we need it to. So why don't we get it on the course, we'll do our after runs and see how all these mods translated into performance. Let's go check it out. Bronco version 2.0, here we go. Let's do our after test. Let's start with the vertical on the shoot here. Next, we're going to do the side hill.
Now getting into our vertical climbs. Now we're going to start with the escalator. Hell's Gate. So those runs were decent, but I've got a secret weapon here. I put limiting straps on here. I made a limiting strap similar to what I do with the SCX-24s, where I loop it around the linkage behind the servo and up around the top of the frame rails here. Now in this case, I actually went around the fake reservoirs of the shocks because I don't have a frame rail there or a body mount to put this on. So that's what I've done. They are not engaged right now. As you can see, it's full drop, no stop here. But what I'm going to do is loop this around another time to tighten up the strap. I'm going to do that on both sides. And that's going to give us some limiting capabilities to control this front end. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to see how this thing climbs. Because I feel like I was struggling a bit on the escalator in particular, and there was getting some lift here on this section on Hell's Gate 2. So let's try the limiting straps and see how this does. So it's been a few days since I did that initial run footage and the subsequent run footage after putting on the mods, and it's only because I ran into a bunch of issues after installing those. So the performance was not exactly what I was looking for, to put it mildly. You know, sometimes you hit a home run with these things, you know, the mods bolt on, they go on really easy, you get great gains out of them, and it's just a win-win. This was not one of those scenarios. So I had a huge hit to performance in a lot of different areas. I felt like the Bronco struggled mightily on the indoor course. It had trouble getting up and over obstacles that were really easy before. It had extreme front end lift, even though I did fashion those limiting straps on there. Still, the, the shock action and everything was just not working. It was really ugly. What you didn't see in those performance videos was the multiple takes 
where the thing failed miserably. And I broke my own rule by only doing three attempts to get an obstacle because I was just so frustrated. Honestly, I was having such a hard time with the Bronco. I was really frustrated. And then things got worse when the drive shaft kept disconnecting. It would, under almost any load, the front drive shaft would just split apart. And miraculously, I found that pin every time. So it disconnected on me five or six times, both on the indoor course and on the rocks on the outside. So that was really disappointing. So I had to kind of take a step back and think about what had happened here and think about the build and what I wanted to do with it. So now we're gonna work on version 2.1 of the Bronco here. So I've got more upgrades for this episode. So why don't we take a look at what I've got now and then we'll put it back on the course and see if we were able to fix it. So let's check it out. So the issues I was having with the Bronco, I think really came down to my shock setup. Those SCX24 Power Hobby shocks are cool because they're long and it was just giving me that crazy articulation that I was looking for. But they really just do not perform very good on the rig, especially with the new setup here. So it was just getting massive front end lift. It was flipping over backwards. It was just body rolling all over the place and I had no traction. It was just not working. So I went back to the drawing board with my shock set up here. Let me show you what I did. First thing I did was put the Joe RC's chassis kit on here. So I've got very versatile shock towers in the front and the ESC tray in the back, which gives me much more position options for my shocks. So I was able to utilize this and then I could kind of tweak my shock placement to keep the front end under control by positioning them in a more adequate place. But then also I scrapped the SCX24 shocks altogether and I went with these low C mini B rear aluminum shocks. One of the greatest things about the Traxxas from the factory is that it comes with those nice oil filled GTM shocks. And one of the first things that I did was remove said shocks, which is kind of foolish, but you know me, I'm always after that articulation. So this is what we ended up doing. But I've gone back to these oil filled shocks because these are these are oil filled as well and they're significantly longer than the stock shocks. Now I don't remember the exact length but I believe these are around 60 to 63 millimeters in length so it's a very long shock. They fit with some modifications so I'll tell you what I had to do. I ran them similar to what I did with the SCX24 shocks is that I pushed out the pivot hardware on the bottom. They don't come with pivot hardware on the top, but I pushed out the pivot hardware on the bottom and just ran the bolts through very similar to what I did with the power hobby shocks. And they fit right in there. They're, they're big, you know, they're, they're very thick, beefy shocks. So I had to run fairly long bolt to keep the shock body from colliding with the frame, but it's solid. It's in there now. You know, I got uh, these bolts into the chassis mounts in the shock towers it's nice and solid they aren't going anywhere and it's still got room for these things to pivot on the bolt themselves so that's the approach that i'm doing flubber stuffers has some modifications coming for these shocks that will attach a shock end to the bottom that has the pivot hardware in it i think maybe possibly the top too so i'm keeping an eye on that so that when i can adapt these a little better to have the pivot hardware in there i think it'll be even better so that's the plan but in the meantime what I did with these was I took a couple different approaches. So they come with springs that are very stiff. You know, the mini B is obviously set up very differently and they do come oil filled. So the first thing I did was take the springs off and I put the stock tracks of springs on here. I still found that was very stiff. So I started messing with the oil. I took a lot of the oil out and I tried to get it to the point where it mimicked the stock Traxxas shock feel. Once I was happy with the oil, and the feel with the stock springs on it, I started messing with shock positioning on these mounts. And then ultimately I ended up taking the springs out entirely because it just, even with the stock springs, it just lifted the chassis up too high. So here is my placement and I'm really happy with this setup. It sits really well. It's got that nice, low, aggressive stance. It's pretty flat across and you still got all that articulation in there. So these still allow for a ton of articulation. 
and they just feel so much better. See, again, you know, that's three inch ramp, clears that, no problem. Plenty of articulation on this thing. Look at it from the front. So it's got it's back to having plenty of room to articulate and to move, and these shocks just feel so much better. Now, what I also did was I, I really noticed that I was getting a massive hang up with the front bumper with these wide tires that we're putting the hex extensions on here, widening out the track at full stop. It was really catching the front bumper, even though I had already trimmed it. So what I've done here is I've, I've really hacked off the ends of the bumper here to give us more clearance. So this should keep us from snagging up on the front bumper. Now I'm still getting rubbing on the fenders here in the back. So I just don't know if these tires are the best long-term choice for this thing. I love how they look and I do love how they perform with the slime balls in them. If I continue to have issues with them snagging on the body, I've got to think about something different because I don't want to trim anymore. So this is kind of where I'm at from a body and chassis perspective. And if I keep having these rubbing and snagging issues, I got to think about a different tire combo, but we're going to try this and see how it does. And finally, to address the drive shaft issue that I was having, I got brand new steel drive shafts. Now, I, my local hobby shop, shout out to Centerline Hobbies here in Hyannis. So awesome they have all this stuff in stock. So I was able to just pop in there and get everything that I needed to get the Bronco back in order. So we've got steel drive shafts front and back on this thing. Now, what I have not done is put any type of keeper on here for the drive shafts. What I do have is some O-ring retainers, and this is actually from a subscriber sent me these. So again, shout out to everybody who helps improve this build and is innovating out there. So I'm gonna run these for a little bit and see how these perform. I will most likely put these O-ring retainers on here. I think these are shrink tubing. So I wanna make sure these are good, and then I'll probably put these on and shrink them on there to retain that pin. So that brings us to where we are right now. So why don't we hit the course again with this thing and see how this upgraded version works. Okay, Bronco version 2.1, doing some vertical climbs here. Here we go. Now we'll do some side hilling across the base of the chute here. Now we're on the escalator. We're doing this with no limiting straps. I want to try this without the straps first, and then we can try it with the strap engaged. Quite a bit of front end lift, still able to pull itself up. So now we're gonna try it with the limiting strap. So here's my setup here, if you can see that. So I've got the rubber band comes up from the linkage, goes up through. I'm actually wrapping it around shock towers here. It goes in the back behind and underneath. So it's just kind of a looping mechanism up and over the motor and just kind of around these Joe RC's shock tower mounts. So let's see how this does. much more composed.
So now let's try Hell's Gate with no limiting straps. Ooh, it's hard to see from that angle, but it's getting crazy lift on the driver's side over there. So now we're going to try the Hell's Gate with the limiting straps engaged here. Much better. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, right? Now we've got the Bronco situated again, and I am so relieved because, man, I was so bummed out after that first round of mods and the way this thing performed and the drive shaft issues. Wicked bummed. But now I'm so pumped with this thing. I'm back in full enthusiastic mode about the TRX 4M and the Bronco build here. So let's back up a little bit and talk about this second round of mods, the version 2.1. First off, let's talk about the shocks. I am in love with the new shocks. These low C mini B shocks work great. I love the dampening and the smoothness of these things, the long travel, they work fantastic. So this is a great shock option. If you're looking for a long travel shock, I suggest checking these things out if you aren't afraid of tinkering and experimenting. Now again, I ran rear shocks all around. So I bought two sets of aluminum rear mini B shocks and that's what I used on this build. With the shocks situated, we were able to really capitalize on the weight and the stability of this thing. Everything seemed to just kind of fall together once I got the reinforced drivetrain with the drive shaft and the shock set up. Yeah, it felt like it worked really, really well. It was interesting. It seems to respond much better to a very gradual slow crawl where before I felt like I had to be a little more aggressive with the throttle to get up and over obstacles and climbs. This time it seemed to really favor a, a slow, creepy crawly approach. And the tires worked fantastic with the flubber stuffers inserts. And I think this just works excellent the way it is. So really happy with the 180 degree turn that we were able to make at the end here from going from really bad to really good. So it really was reminiscent of the SCX24 build where you kind of take one step back, but then go two steps forward after doing some troubleshooting. But that's part of the fun. That's some of the stuff that I enjoy the most about this hobby because it's so rewarding when you figure out the issues and you get back on track and even make progress. So really fun. So this was a fun one. This was a really saturated video. We put a lot of stuff in here, but we still got a lot more on the bench for this thing. You know, now with all the added weight, I feel like it could use some more power and we've got plenty of more power coming in the next episode. So we've got the Fury Tech treatment coming in the near future. So we're going to address any of the weight issues. Speaking of weight, I want to do a little contest. If you can guess the weight of the Bronco as it is right now, I'll give away a $50 gift card to A Main Hobbies. So let me know your thoughts down below. How much do you think it weighs? If you can guess the weight, the winner will get a gift card. And it'll be the first person who guesses the weight correctly. So that's going to wrap it up for the video. Let me know your thoughts down below, what you think of the build and what do you think of these mods. Have you done any of these mods to your TRX 4M? Definitely want to hear from you guys. Also try to guess the weight. We'll get that little contest going. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And stay tuned as we continue to build out the Bronco. We got some big things coming. This is just the beginning, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to dive into this thing deep, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Thanks again for your time. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.